Give us a sense of what you think the high points are. What are the important points he's going to hit? Well, I think the uh, high points are that the testimony is written rather deftly. He talks about a lot of the issues, but what he's really talking about is a blueprint for SEC action. It appears the SEC is going to take steps to define what their responsibilities are, for example, of websites like Robinhood that uh, gamify uh, brokerage trading. It looks as if he wants to uh, take action against payment for order flow. He has some fascinating statistics which show how much of equity trading is done off of an organized exchange and is done by um, payment for order flow and private uh, enterprises. And it appears to me that uh, what happened in Archegos is clearly on the SEC site. So while Gensler posed this as questions, I think you have to read what he said as a blueprint for action over the next five or six months. Let's pick up, if we could, Harvey, first on that issue about how many securities are being traded off exchange. I was really startled by the number. Uh, Chair Chairman Gunsler says in his report to Congress, 38 percent of the securities traded were actually done off exchange by wholesalers. I was quite surprised at that. It, the number is um, startling. Um, uh, just by point of reference, uh, when I was chairman of the SEC um, in the early 2000s, about 80% of trading in listed stocks were done on the exchange itself. Today, my understanding is it's about 18%. That's an enormous shift in markets, and it has huge potential, both for the protection of investors and for the structure of how capital is raised in this country. And Mr. Gensler suggests in his testimony, if I read it correctly, that beyond the number overall of 38 percent, there's a fair amount of concentration, that there's a relatively small handful of wholesalers that really account for a lot of that 38 percent. Yes, and uh, that concentration um, creates difficulties. In one sense, if you concentrate um, where trades are done, you may have a more efficient market, but that would require that the marketplace be fully open and fully transparent, which is not the case with these markets. The, the real impetus for behind this hearing, I think it's fair to say, was what happened with Robin Hood and GameStop and some other so-called meme stocks. And he starts out there. Mr. Gensler says it's not limited. It has ramifications beyond that. But you mentioned gamification. Uh, and Gary Gensler goes through sort of some of the aspects of gamification. Is gamification something the SEC is equipped to address? It is, but um, only indirectly. Um, we have issues here of free speech and um, uh, the SEC's ability to regulate is dependent upon having a nexus to preventing fraud uh, or misrepresentation. So the SEC can require a site that uses gamification to post certain warnings and to advise those who use the site about what the purpose of uh, the gamification is. It can't outlaw gamification outright, and I don't think that the SEC would ever try to do that specifically. Uh, Harvey, you mentioned uh, Archegos, uh, because that's also another issue addressed in uh, Chairman Gunsler's remarks. Uh, tell us what the SEC has and has not done on that issue, because it appears part of the issue is a form of disclosure. Uh, did actually we understand the banks who were taking the counterparty risk, did they understand the kind of exposure they were stepping up to? Yeah. The difficulty with Archegos is um, first, that um, uh, a lot of the prime banks that originally uh, refused uh, to deal uh, with that uh, so-called family office, and that's a separate issue as to whether it's a real family office, but most of the uh, prime brokers uh, had refused to deal with it, but when they saw the amount of trading 
Um, I think it's fair to say um, that their pocketbooks uh, took over for their brains and they started to look at ways to facilitate the trading unbeknownst to them by uh, using synthetic securities and swaps and the like and without requiring any disclosure. Um, these prime banks were unaware, and that is also a result of their lack of due diligence, but they were unaware uh, that they were funding the same transactions. And so uh, as a result of this, Archegos was uh, able to over leverage the situation, and that is what has caused the astronomical losses that have occurred here, and that should not be allowed to occur. Harvey, I wonder if there's something of a theme running through much of Chairman Gensler's testimony here, and that is uh, the encouraging of unnecessary trading, just getting the volume up. Uh, you certainly have that in the gamification, but also he talks about payment for order flow. And the way he lays it out, part of the way that works economically is people make money off of just getting more data, and so the more trades you get, the more data. And there's a question of whether that's really constructive. Yeah, what um, Chairman Gensler has done is he's identified a clear conflict of interest. There are those who want to promote trading for the sake of trading. Um, Robinhood as a vehicle for trading and the like um, want investors to make trades. They want to encourage them to make trades, but that's not always in an investor's best interest. And what I think the chairman is getting at is there's a real conflict that arises and there have to be ways to protect individual and institutional investors from being seduced by the promise of quick profits or zero commissions when in fact they're paying for all of these trades but in other ways.